In the shadowed corridors of the prison system, behind the cold bars and under the watchful eyes of guards, inmates create their own order, often targeting those they deem the most reprehensible. Among these, child molesters occupy the lowest rung, viewed not just as criminals, but as pariahs, subject to the harshest forms of inmate justice. This video delves into the chilling reality faced by these predators in prison, a world where their crimes catch up to them in the most brutal ways, often leading to violent retributions and, in most cases, death. Richard Huckle. Let's start the video with Richard Huckle, known as one of Britain's most notorious people. Files. This criminal's activities began to surface when he was arrested at Gatwick Airport in 2014. He was returning to the UK for the Christmas holidays when officers from the National Crime Agency's Child Exploitation and Online Protection Command apprehended him. Investigations revealed a horrifying pattern of abuse. Huckle had posed as a Christian teacher and photographer in Malaysia, where he exploited his access to vulnerable children. The extent of Huckle's crimes was staggering. He was found guilty of 71 offences against 22 children, ranging from sexual assault to rape. The victims were between 6 months and 12 years old, and many of the offences occurred in Malaysia. Huckle's method of operation involved gaining the trust of poor Christian communities in Kuala Lumpur. He would offer to teach English and take children on trips, using these opportunities to carry out his abuse. What made Huckle's case even more appalling was his use of the dark web to share images and videos of his abuse. He was a member of a pedophile site that showed the abuse of babies and young children with tens of thousands of accounts. His activities on the dark web were part of a larger network that was eventually tracked down by police in Europe and Australia. In 2016, Huckle was sentenced to 22 life sentences for his crimes. However, on October 13, 2019, he was found dead in his cell at Full Sutton Prison in East Yorkshire. He was 33 years old at the time of his death. The circumstances of Huckle's death were as brutal as the crimes he committed. Another prisoner, Paul Fitzgerald, subjected Huckle to a 78-minute attack. Fitzgerald strangled Huckle with an electrical cable sheath, inserted a pen into his brain through his nostril, raped him, and inflicted several other forms of torture. Fitzgerald, who was 30 years old at the time, was serving a sentence for a previous murder, and his attack on Huckle was seen, by many, as a form of vigilante justice, reflecting the deep hatred and contempt that child sex offenders often face in prison. Jared Fogel once a celebrated spokesperson for Subway restaurants, who experienced a dramatic fall from grace that shocked the public. Born in August 1977, Fogel grew up in Indianapolis and attended North Central High School, later graduating from Indiana University in 2000. His claim to fame was his significant weight loss, reportedly shedding 245 pounds between 1998 and 1999 largely attributed to a diet consisting of Subway's low-fat sandwiches. This transformation catapulted him into the limelight, and he became the face of Subway, appearing in their advertising campaigns from 2000 to 2015. However, beneath this health-conscious individual, Fogel harbored a dark secret. In 2015, the FBI and Indiana State Police raided his residence in Zionsville, Indiana, as a part of an investigation into distribution and receipt of child pornography charges. This operation led to the discovery of computers and other electronic equipment that contained incriminating evidence against Fogel. Fogel was accused of engaging in illicit sexual conduct with a minor and was found to have distributed and received child porn. In August 2015, federal prosecutors announced a plea deal with Fogel, where he agreed to plead guilty to two counts, one for distribution and receipt of child pornography, and the other for traveling to engage in illicit sexual conduct with a minor. Consequently, Fogel was sentenced to 15 years behind bars. Fogel's time in prison has been marked by violence and hostility from fellow inmates, reflecting the general disdain for child predators in the prison system. In January 2016, Fogel was attacked by fellow inmate Stephen J. Nigg. The attack was brutal, with Nigg striking Fogel multiple times in the face with a closed fist. This assault left Fogel with a bloody nose, scratches on his neck, and swelling and redness on his face. Nig's motivation for attacking Fogel stemmed from his frustration with his own conviction and the perception that Fogel was using his celebrity status and financial resources to receive special treatment in prison. Robert Munger. Imagine being locked in a cell with the very person who turned your life upside down, the one who inflicted unimaginable pain on someone you love. This was the harrowing reality for Shane Goldsby, a 26-year-old inmate in a Washington state prison whose cellmate was none other than Robert Munger, a 70-year-old man serving a 43-year sentence for heinous crimes that included multiple charges of child 
molestation and first-degree child rape. Munga's past was a dark pattern of offenses, a series of acts that shattered the innocence of his young victims and left indelible scars on their lives. The worst part? Goldsby's sister was one of Munga's victims. Within the prison walls, Munger's brazen attitude towards his crimes added a chilling dimension to his character. He reportedly bragged about his offenses, displaying a lack of remorse that was both shocking and provocative. This behavior, in the close quarters of a prison cell, was like a ticking time bomb, and it finally exploded in in June 2020. Goldsby, unable to contain his fury any longer, unleashed a brutal attack on Munger. The assault was savage and unrelenting, resulting in Munger's death. This act of violence, while shocking, was not entirely unexpected given the circumstances. It raised serious questions, though, about the prison system's decision-making in cellmate assignments. The aftermath of the incident saw Goldsby sentenced to an additional 25 years in prison, a stark reminder of the consequences of taking justice into one's own hands. Roy Whiting Born in Horsham, West Sussex, England, Roy Whiting was the second of three children whose early life was marked by family struggles as his parents divorced during the 1970s. He attended Ifield Community College but left in 1975 with no significant academic achievements. Whiting's early adult life was unremarkable, filled with manual jobs and a brief unsuccessful marriage. However, beneath this seemingly mundane exterior lurked a disturbing predilection. In 1995, Whiting's true nature surfaced when he abducted a nine-year-old girl in Ifield near Crawley. He was sentenced to four years in prison for this crime, but served only half his sentence, being released in 1997. This early release would have dire consequences though. Only three years later, in July 2000, Whiting committed a crime that would forever mark him as one of Britain's most notorious criminals. He abducted and murdered eight-year-old Sarah Payne, a case that gripped the nation and led to significant changes in how child sex offenders are monitored. Whiting was arrested and eventually convicted of Sarah's murder, receiving a life sentence with a minimum term of four 40 years. Now, life in prison for Whiting has been a series of brutal encounters. In 2002, he was attacked with a razor, leaving a six-inch scar on his cheek. In 2011, he suffered a stab wound to his eye. The most recent attack occurred in 2018, when he was stabbed by two prisoners in his cell at HMP Wakefield. Brett Peter Cowan. In the quiet streets of Australia, a shadow lurked, one that would soon cast a dark and enduring stain on the nation's conscience. This shadow bore a name, Brett Peter Cowan. Cowan's first known crime, committed when he was barely an adult at 18, was as shocking as it was heinous. He preyed on a seven-year-old boy, luring him into a park bathroom to commit an act of rape. The gravity of this crime was met with a surprisingly lenient punishment. Cowan spent just one year behind bars. Then, in 1993, Cowan struck again. This time, his victim was a six-year-old boy, whom he lured into an abandoned car yard. The aftermath of this assault was nothing short of horrific, leaving the young boy with a punctured lung and multiple cuts. The year 2003 marked Cowan's descent into true infamy. On December 7th, he abducted 13-year-old Daniel Morecambe, a boy waiting for a bus on the Sunshine Coast. The disappearance ignited a massive search and captured the nation's attention. Initially, Cowan evaded police suspicion due to a lack of solid evidence linking him to the crime. It took a sophisticated and covert police operation, inspired by the Canadian Mr. Big technique, to finally unmask Cowan. Undercover officers, posing as criminals, gradually gained Cowan's trust and extracted a confession for Morecambe's murder. In 2014, justice was served when Cowan was sentenced to life in prison, eligible for parole after 20 years. However, in prison, Cowan faced true justice. In 2016, he was viciously attacked by fellow inmate Adam Paul Davidson, who doused him with boiling water, causing severe burns and pain. In another incident, Cowan was stabbed in the ear and neck with an improvised weapon, causing superficial wounds. In the most alarming episode though, inmates planned a riot with the intention of attacking Cowan. They heated jam in a microwave and armed themselves with a hot sandwich maker and sharpened broomsticks. Cowan, who was in the exercise yard at the time, narrowly escaped harm as prison officers intervened before the inmates could reach him. John Geoghan. Last but not least is John Geoghan and his chilling tale of crime and a tragic end. Born on June 4, 1935 in Boston, Massachusetts, Geoghan's life took a dark turn as he became embroiled in one of the most notorious sexual abuse scandals in the history of the Catholic Church. Ordained as a priest in 1962, he served in various parishes across Massachusetts, where he appeared to be a dedicated clergyman. However, beneath this veneer of piety lurked a disturbing reality. Over the years, Geoghan was accused of molesting 
molesting nearly 130 children, primarily young boys. His predatory behavior was first reported in the 1970s, but it was systematically covered up by the church. Instead of facing punishment, Geoghan was frequently transferred between parishes, where he continued to have access to children. The scandal exploded into public consciousness in 2002, when the Boston Globe Spotlight team published a series of reports exposing the church's failure to protect children from abusive priests, including Geoghan. The revelation sent shockwaves through the Catholic community and beyond. Geoghan was defrocked and, in 2002, convicted of indecent assault and battery on a 10-year-old boy. He was sentenced to 9 to 10 years in the Sousa Baranowski Correctional Center, a maximum security prison in Massachusetts. However, his time in prison would be short and brutal. On August 23, 2003, Geoghan's life came to a violent end. He was strangled and stomped to death by Joseph Druce, a fellow inmate with a history of violence and a deep-seated hatred for child molesters. Druce, who was already serving a life sentence for another murder, meticulously planned the attack. He jammed the door of their shared cell to prevent guards from intervening and used a pair of socks to strangle Geoghan. If you liked the video, please consider subscribing and sharing so we can keep bringing more content like this. See you next time.